Hello, I'm Professor Neil Shulman, and I want to introduce you to the start of the Project Delivery Method and Contracts course. And specifically in lesson one, we're going to cover managing project risks. And in particular, we're going to go over the introduction to project delivery methods, separate professional functions, project acceleration, potential unacceptable working relationships, and finally, are construction projects risky? We'll go over the risk reward ratio thought process. Thank you. Some of the items we're going to discuss in this module is getting into the introduction to project delivery methods. We'll also talk about separate professional functions of the architects, the engineers, the contractors, and the owner. We'll talk about project administration. We'll also cover potential, potential problems with working relationships of the professionals who have different relationships for a different type of project delivery method. And then we'll also cover our construction projects risky. I think they are, but we'll talk about the pros and cons. So let's get into the introduction to project delivery methods. An owner's goal is choosing a project delivery method. It's up to the owner to make that decision. The owner wants to ensure that it meets the project objectives, fits within the culture of their organization, allows the project to be delivered on time, within budget, with good quality and proper safety, and finally, Managing a project and its risks and challenges really decides on the combination mix of the professionals, depending on the project delivery method, which we will get into soon. The next item we're covering is the separate professional functions of the architect and the contractor. On all projects, we have architect engineers and the contractor, but depending on their relationships, that will determine the project delivery method. Communication between these two organizations, the A&E and the contractor, is key. Actions of one can have an impact on the other. Consultation and communication between the parties is important to maintain a good budget, a good schedule, great quality, and minimize scope creep. Another item I wanted to cover today is project acceleration. Sometimes you can go too quickly on a project. Obviously, the owner wants a project delivered quickly. The owner wants early completion, which is very important, not only to the owner, but also to the user who's going to occupy the facility. And there are risks with going too fast in either or both phases. That is, in either the design phase or the construction phase. Another risk is incomplete or conflicting documents, which we will cover later in much more depth, for example, in constructability. Hi, I hope you're enjoying this free lesson from the University of Maryland's Project Management Center for Excellence. If you wanna check out more lessons just like this one, click the link in the description below where you'll be able to go to our website on executive project management. There, you can find edX courses, professional short courses where you can learn from an instructor like me, as well as request custom team training for you and your organization. All right, let's get back to the lesson and I'll see you at the end. The next item to cover is potential unacceptable working relationships. This can occasionally happen. Now, the project team is generally assembled for one project. That's what project management and construction management is about. We put a team together. We, we accomplish a partnership and we get started on the project. The personnel and personal 
work styles, and corporate cultures can be very, very different between all members, the owner, the architect and engineers, and the contractor. So culture is a real common theme that we will also talk about in greater depth later. Personal chemistry between individuals plays an important role. And partnering sessions are important. These are sessions that are held and run by a third party facilitator, generally, to get all the players together and talk about not only the project, but sometimes their personal lives and get into a good working relationship between all the members of the team. Construction contract and risk allocation is critical to be proper. Risk allocation is the key buzzwords. Next, are construction projects risky? Let me tell you a little story about the Russian embassy project. And the project was built with no contingency funds. Yes, no contingency funds. There was a limited number of dollars. This doesn't happen very often, but it was a design bid build project. And they effectively said, this is the budget and there are no change orders. Now, we all know change orders are inevitable. And on the project, we did have change orders. And what we had to do to create a contingency fund was to descope. So as the job progressed, two good examples that I will give you as to how we created contingency funds was it in the landscape architecture side of the project, we had a lot of ground cover. It was a big site and there was a huge amount of pachysandra and the planting called for one plant every six inches on center. Well, pachysandra ground cover grows very, very quickly. In a year or two, it really spreads. So we came up with a very clever idea of having the contractor reduce the scope, reduce the price, add some more contingency, and place the plants every 12 inches on center and every 6 inches. Theoretically, what we did is we cut the landscape budget for ground cover in half, and it worked. And a year or two later, the ground was completely covered. One other example of creating a contingency was we actually eliminated one of the elevators in the building. Pretty extreme decision, but the owner said, it's okay, we have enough elevators, we can afford to leave that shaft empty, because the shaft was built already. We just didn't put the cab, the rails, the brackets, or any of the cabling within that shaft. So it can work. So was that a risky situation? It sure was. So make sure you do have contingency funds on your project, regardless, regardless of the project delivery method. Well, I hope you enjoyed the Managing Project Risks lesson, lesson number one, where we covered some of the thought process of risk in determining a project delivery method. In the next module, we are going to cover assessing project risks. So we'll see you in the next module shortly. Hey there, did you enjoy that lesson as much as I did? If you did, go ahead and give us a like. If you want to see another one, go ahead and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, put them below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Moreover, is there somebody in your life who really needs this lesson right now? If so, go ahead and share it with them. I'm sure they'll appreciate it. Now, we look forward to seeing you in the next lesson where you can learn even more from the University of Maryland Project Management Center for Excellence. Thanks so much.